morning. It's another very bright sunny day here in Eastern North Carolina. It looks like the cold is past or is passing and spring is almost upon us. Hopefully in another few weeks, no more freezes. Although the temperature is supposed to continuously warm up throughout the rest of this week. Uh, the parts that I'm missing for the greenhouse or I need for the greenhouse to try to complete the greenhouse are on the way. Hopefully later this week they'll be here and I can get that done. Maybe Friday's video. We'll see. Today, I don't know. There's no actual theme. I just need to get a lot of this and that done. And sometimes that's what you have to do when you go out to the garden, especially when you're preparing for spring. It's you got to do this and that. It's just a lot of little things. It's sometimes never just one project. It's just a lot of little projects. So follow along and let's see what I can get done today. You know, I was going to go out and start working on my fire pit and I got to take some nails out from some old pallet wood out of the fire pit and I was going to put the ashes in the rose garden. We'll get to that in a second, but first, my raised bed here, which you really can't see in shot, <laughs> but I had carrots growing in last year. Well, carrots really don't like really hot heat, so I should probably get to planting some of my carrot seeds now. So I'm going to go inside, grab a pack of the carrot seeds, clean up this bed a bit, and uh, get to planting. Well, that's burning and I'll keep feeding it because I have a lot of wood, scrap wood and uh, cut down wood or broken up wood that has landed on the property, tree limbs, etc. You know the drill. Well, while that's burning, I'm going to go turn around and uh, move some wood chips to from the one big pile out to the future areas of the rose garden. Now, if you've missed any of that or don't know what I'm talking about, go back Watch my other Rose Garden videos. Uh, there should be a playlist below. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna get to work. Now at the edge of the wood pile I was just digging at, there are these, looks like three crepe, uh, not crepe, I'm sorry, wax myrtles, wax myrtles. Uh, they're native to the area. They're probably native to most of North America, I would presume. 
and um, they're pretty vigorous growers. So I'm actually going to use these three as free plants from Mother Nature, and I'm going to replant them in a different spot in the yard so that I can dig out all these wood chips. And uh, yeah, so let me get to that. Well, that was pretty much a failure. <laughs> the roots of the wax myrtle were actually deeper than I thought they were. And it was difficult, if not impossible, to dig up. And I wasn't gonna spend hours trying to dig to the bottom of the wood chip pile to try to dig the plant up. I was able to recover one small one with a good amount of root. And then I was able to recover what looked like a very sizable root system. And in speaking to a prior neighbor, prior neighbor, same neighbor, <laughs> at a prior time, he said that once he had dug up a stump, just a stump of wax myrtle, moved it to a different part of his property, reburied it, and the, the uh, wax myrtle grew. So it's a very, I guess, aggressive or, or strong plant in that regards that and I, I've seen, well, I have wax myrtle here on the property that it just gets, you know, under two to three inches of water for maybe a week at a time. It doesn't seem to bother the plant. The heat doesn't seem to bother the plant. The plant is just very strong and it keeps growing. And I've trimmed the plant because I have sections uh, behind the garage where I'm trying to keep it pruned back. and in the area that I will be using as a uh, future topiary garden, I've uh, trimmed that back and it just grow. You could literally trim it two to three times a year and it just keeps, it, it grows quickly. So I'm going to uh, try to plant up two little spots that I had, two little bits that I have. I think I'll plant them both in the same hole. I'll water it, I'll mark it off so I don't run over it with the lawnmower. <laughs> because I think I have to mow the lawn tomorrow. We're supposed to get more rain, I believe it's Wednesday evening. I'll have to check. I'm either gonna mow the lawn tomorrow for the first time uh, for the season, or I'm gonna mow it uh, Wednesday morning. We'll have to see how the weather holds out and what's going on and how I feel. But uh, let me get to planting these things. And you know, again, you have to subscribe, click that bell icon, follow along. I'm building the garden here in Growing Zone 8A. And uh, you can see what happens to the wax myrtle later in the year. Does it survive? Doesn't it survive? Just a, a quick side note, I did take some cuttings from some wax myrtle. They're back on the uh, potting bench. And I think I've got ant bite my leg. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I have some uh, wax myrtle that I took cuttings of and I put into a pot. They seem to be hanging in there. If they start growing vigorously this year in their own little pots, I will plant them out. The area that I want to be the, I'm actually standing in the area that I want to be the sort of wild natural garden kind of thing. Uh, low maintenance area filled with um, native plants, if and when I can get them in here and find, you know, it's gonna be a long-term project. Again, an acre and a half garden. It's gonna take some time to build out, <laughs> especially by myself. But uh, if they start growing and doing well, I'll plant them out here in the, in the uh, natural garden, wild garden, whatever I'm gonna call it, I don't know. But let me get to planting what I have today and then I think there's one more project I wanna do for today before I call it quits. Hopefully I'm out of focus. <laughs> and the last thing I want to do today is up pot some celery that I started from seed. Now, I, you know, according to, I don't know if you can grow celery indoors and according to the packet it said so directly outdoors, but I thought, why don't I try to grow it, start it indoors when it's still cold out, up pot it, 
So that's what I'm going to do today is up pot it. And then maybe plant it outdoors into either uh, another pot like I have one from last year. Uh, or turn around and plant it out into the garden, into the veg garden. I don't know. Have you ever grown uh, celery from seed? And if you have so, have you ever grown it, started it indoors and then grown it outdoors? This is an experiment for me. So uh, let me turn around and up pot these things and I'll show you what we got. So these are just little itty bitty things, but many of them have their true leaves. So what I'm going to try to do today is pull out eight weed, weeds, <laughs> pull out eight that look good to me. And this is actually a really good clump, clump right here I'm going to start with. And one of the reasons that I'm up potting these as well is because the pan that I have them growing in here, the tray, is very shallow. These actually have a very good root system. I don't know if you could tell that. So I'm going to try to, that's a weed, gently. See there's too many seeds in this clump. So these are the leaves that the seed comes up with. And then these are the true leaves. So I'll just take this little guy here and I'm going to dig a little hole to this mix I made up and tuck him in. And that's where he'll stay until he gets either too big for the pot or I decide to plant him someplace else. Alright, let's see if we can do another one here. Now I'm also putting them into a compost mix. So it's got little bits and bobs of wood that has perlite and vermiculite in it. So hopefully it likes this. Hopefully it's loose enough to be free draining and the plant grows well. Gotta uh, be really careful. And these will go back uh, into the green, uh, into the garage, under the grow lights with the heat mats. Okay, so my camera battery died. It's the bane of all YouTubers. Uh, I have eight little celery plants, all planted up, thoroughly watered. And I think that's about it for today because I still have to go in and edit this video. <laughs> so I got some wood chips moved in the rose garden. I uh, tried to salvage a wax myrtle or two. <laughs> I burned a lot of uh, wood yard waste, a little bit of pallet wood too. And all those ashes will go into the future beds of the rose garden, the beds that I'm not planting in right now, the beds that will be cultivated probably in two to three years. So again, it's gonna be you know some wood chips, some wood ash, I'll put grass clippings in there. Things like that. Um, if I ever dig up any chunks of grass, soil, they'll probably get dumped into those areas. And my hope is, is that in the next two to three years, with the heat and the rain and the humidity and the freezes <laughs> and the cold temperatures, all of this turns around and breaks down and it starts to enrich the soil that's beneath it pull up those earthworms to grab the good stuff that's there and raise that ground level just a little bit, especially the back of the rose garden, which can get two to three inches underwater. So I really need to work on elevating that ground. And again, wood chips, grass, wood ash, all that will go into that area. And over time, you know, it will do, it's, it's either that or I turn around and buy, you know, 10 tons literally of topsoil, compost, whatever, uh, and then, you know, fill in those areas, but that's going to cost me thousands of dollars. Why do that when I have the, the wood chips and the grass clippings and the wood ash? <laughs> I already have those materials. Uh, so, re, you know, reuse those materials, use those materials, use what you have on hand. I think that's about it for today. I think I'm done rambling. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Uh, check out my links below, uh, and I'm going to try today, maybe, to finally get up some of those drawings of the 
uh, garden that I've been promising for weeks on end now that I haven't gotten up on my website, but uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> Keep saying that. I'm awful. I know. I know. Uh, I hopefully will be planting out the one shrub rose bush that I have, the David Austin, in probably the next two to three weeks. I have to order uh, a couple more pieces of edging. And I'm still looking for a good arbor to put my climbing rose on. I think I've narrowed it down to two. One's not in stock right now. The other one kind of is in stock. They're both very expensive. If you know of a good place to get an arbor, a good arbor that's anywhere from seven to eight feet wide, please let me know in the comments below. I'm very, I, I need something that's gonna be seven to eight feet across. I prefer eight feet, but again, if you know someplace, if in your internet wanderings, you've stumbled across some place that has a good garden arbor, it has to be something strong too. I'm not looking for something that's made out of cheap aluminum from China that will just blow down with the first 60 mile per hour wind gust that we get. I'm in Eastern North Carolina, just a few miles from, from the ocean. And they, you know, occasionally we get hit with a hurricane. So I'd prefer an arbor that could hold up pretty well you know, nothing's hurricane proof, but if something does hold up pretty well, I'd be pretty happy. I know a piece, cheap, cheap piece of aluminum from China is not going to do it. So that's going to be about it for today. Again, leave any questions, comments below. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.